The End of the Qing Dynasty, Part 2, The Internal Rebellions, Section C, The Nian Rebellion. The Nian Rebellion. The Nian Rebellion was an armed uprising that took place in northern China from 1851 to 1868. Around the same time as the Taiping Rebellion. It was also intended to topple the Qing dynasty, but just caused massive economic devastation and loss of life. It became yet another major long-term factor in the collapse of the Qing Empire. Nian is a word borrowed from the Hubei dialect, which was a form of Central Plains Mandarin. It was loosely to mean groups of gangs or bandits. The Nian movement was formed in the late 1840s by Zhang Lexing and by 1851 numbered approximately 40,000. Unlike the Taiping Rebellion movement, the Nian initially had no clear goals or objectives aside from criticism of the Qing government. Their slogan was, kill the rich and aid the poor. However, the Nian were provoked into taking direct action against the imperial regime following a series of environmental disasters. The 1851 Yellow River flood deluged hundreds of thousands of square miles and caused immense loss of life. The Qing government slowly began cleaning up after the disaster, but could not provide effective aid as government finances had been drained during the recent First Opium War with the British Empire and the ongoing slaughter of the Taiping Rebellion. The damage created by the disaster had still not been repaired when, in 1855, the river burst its banks again, drowning thousands and devastating the fertile province of Jiangsu, along with the destruction caused by the floods famine spread. At the time, the Qing government was trying to negotiate a deal with the European powers, and as state finances had been so severely depleted, the regime was again unable to provide effective relief. This enraged the Nian movement, which blamed the Europeans for contributing to the nation's troubles and increasingly viewed the Qing government as incompetent. The Nian rebels seem to have been influenced by the previous 1794 White Lotus Rebellion and recruited from secret societies and sects such as the White Lotus. They actively borrowed their terminology and symbols, like the practices of sworn brotherhood five colors of banners, flags with eight trigrams, and the widespread use of units of women warriors. Zhang Lexing, leader of the rebellion, used the title Bright King of the Great Han. This is similar to the White Lotus leadership title. Political scientist, sci scientists Valerie Hudson and Andrea Denbor suggest that the rebellion was fueled, at least in part, by decades of female infanticide caused by the flood-related economic misery. This led to a large population of frustrated young men without any women to marry. Perhaps as many as a quarter of all young men in the area 
being in this category of their branches. The Rebellion. The Nian rebels were, to a large degree, desperate and poor peasants that banded together in bandit groups simply to survive. However, as natural disasters grew worse, these bandit groups grew increasingly large. They eventually became armies and were able to directly challenge the government. The main interest of most Nian members still remained plundering communities that were better off, though. They were also resisting taxation. Religious motifs and symbols were of little importance to the Nian rebels. While the Nian forces possibly inherited some of their symbols, such as red turbans and eight trigram flags from the white lotus, the overall influence of spiritual movements, such as the white lotus or the god worshipping society of the Taipings, on them was low. There were examples of White Lotus rebels fighting alongside Nian groups. But the Nians then turned around and attacked the White Lotus members to rob them. On average, the Nian groups in Henan remained more similar to just a bunch of bandits than the Nian in Anhui. Overall, the Nian movement remained primarily the expression of mundane strategies of survival, according to historian Elizabeth J. Perry. They were never revolutionaries. Other than slogans, they called for the death of government officials and the rich, as well as hopes for a more just society. They lacked clear, well-defined goals. That some Nian armies became actual rebel movements was mostly due to the ambitions of individual Nian leaders who wanted to become legitimate rulers. The Nian used cavalry in part to aid in looting, which served to support both the Nian forces and their home communities. In contrast to the mobile cavalry, the Nian's defensive tactics were based on the so-called earth wall communities they controlled. Support of the peasantry proved crucial and provided the true base of the Nian's power. In 1851, the Nian began raiding the grain stores and silver caches of villages. When the Taipings took Nanjing, some Nian leaders decided to try to make an alliance with them. Hong Shukran gave some titles to a few of the Nian leaders, and the Nian and Taiping occasionally cooperated. Full coordination between the two rebellions was never achieved. Cases in which Nian armies submitted or even fully joined the Taipings were rare. Most bandit armies were only interested in imminent profit and survival. In 1855, Zhang Lexing took direct action by launching attacks against government troops in central China. By the summer, the fast-moving Nian cavalry, well-trained and fully equipped with modern firearms, had cut the lines of communication between Beijing and the Qing armies that were fighting the Taiping rebels in the south. Qing forces were badly overstretched as rebellions broke out 
across China. Here, 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 here. And allowing the Nian armies to conquer large tracts of land and gain control over economically vital areas. The Nian fortified their captured cities and used them as bases to launch cavalry attacks against Qing troops in the countryside, prompting, prompting local towns to fortify themselves against Nian raiding parties. This resulted in constant fighting which devastated the previously rich provinces of Jiangsu and Hunan. In 1856, several Nian bands formed an alliance led by Zhang Lexing, organizing themselves into a loose confederation of five armies. Each army was identified by a colored banner, operated largely autonomous, and recruited mostly people belonging to a single clan. As a result, each banner army had a core area which consisted of a number of villages whose inhabitants were related to each other. Due to the widely differing numbers of the evolved clans, the banner armies were not regular sizes. Some were big and some were small. The Yellow Banner Army, led by Zhang himself, drew its forces from 18 villages. The White Banner Army, a Kung Fei, from 13 villages. The Red Banner Army, of Ho Shi Wei from 12 villages. The Blue Banner Army of Han Lao Wan from just six villages. The Black Banner Army of Su Chen Fu from 100 villages. Zhang tried to get more order and coordination upon the alliance, but had only limited success. Internal differences caused the alliance to quickly fall apart, and by 1858, it was effectively dissolved. In early 1856, the Qing government sent the Mongol general Senga Lingquin, who had recently crushed a large Taiping army to defeat the Nian. Senga Lingquin's army captured several fortified cities and destroyed most of the Nian infantry. They killed Zhang Lexing himself in an ambush in 1863. The Nian movement survived though. In 1864, as the skilled Taiping commanders Lai Wenguang and Fan Ru Xing arrived to take control of the Nian forces, and the bulk of the Nian cavalry was still intact. Sangalinquin's infantry-based army could not stop the fast-moving cavalry from devastating the countryside and launching surprise attacks on imperial troops. In late 1865, Sangalinquin and his bodyguards were ambushed by Nian troops and killed in the Battle of Kulao Jai. This took away the Qing government's best military commander. The Qing regime then sent General Zheng Guofan to take command of imperial forces protecting the capital of Beijing. They provided him with modern artillery and weapons purchased from the Europeans at very high prices. Zheng's army then got busy building canals and trenches to hem in the Nian cavalry. This was an effective but slow tactic. 
General Zheng, was relieved of command after Nian infantry broke through one of his defense lines. He was replaced by Generals Li Hongzhang and Zhu Zongtang. They were equipped with even more expensive European artillery and firearms. In late 1866, the remaining Nian forces split into two, with the Eastern Army, under command of Lai Wenguang, stationed in central China, while the Western Army advanced on Beijing. The Western Army, commanded by Zhang Zongyu, who was Zhang Lexing's brother's son, was defeated southwest of Beijing by Qing troops, leaving large areas of Nian territory exposed to a Qing counterattack. By late 1867, Li Hongzhang's and Zhu Zongtang's troops had recaptured most Nian territory, and in early 1868, the remnants were crushed by the combined forces of the government's troops and the ever-victorious army, led by Westerners. The Nian Rebellion failed to topple the Qing Dynasty, largely because it failed to make alliances with other rebels, especially the Taiping movement. The Nian only symbolically supported Taiping efforts by accepting the Taiping King's appointments, but refusing to follow his orders. Had the Nian and Taipings joined forces, the Qing government would have been faced with a formidable threat, in spite of its alliances with European powers. Despite the Nian's failure to seize power, the events of the rebellion dealt a severe blow to the Qing dynasty. The environmental disasters of 1851 and 1855 devastated the richest provinces of China, depriving the Qing regime of tax income and trade duties. The endless fighting between Nian troops and Qing forces, who made widespread use of scorched earth tactics, ruined the countryside and resulted in countless deaths. Although the Nian rebellion was smaller than that of the Taiping, it severely drained government finances, devastated the richest areas and China, and left China's economy in a very precarious state. In the long term, the Nian Rebellion was to become one of the major factors in the collapse of Qing China.